It's day 145 of the project and all this week I've brought you some superb smelling fragrances that have all had excellent performance and have all been easy on the bank balance. And today's scent of the day is the last of the cheapies, uh, but it's possibly the most accurate clone of an expensive niche fragrance that you're ever likely to buy. This is from Middle Eastern fragrance house Lataffa, and it goes by the name of Oud for Glory. Hmm, I wonder what this is a clone of. To find out my thoughts on this one, stay tuned to Mag's Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is day 145 of my Fragrance 365 project where it's the fragrance that's the star of the show. Today's featured scent is Oud for Glory by Lataffa, which came out in 2020 and is obviously a clone of Oud for Greatness by Initio Parfums. I'm actually quite shocked at how they've been able to get away with making the bottle look and feel so much like the original. They've massively ripped off the bottle design and at first glance you could easily mistake it for the original bottle of Oud for Greatness. I paid just 25 quid uh, for this one on Amazon and if you're interested in picking up a bottle for yourself I've posted a direct link in the description where you uh, can find this one. Yeah, so into the presentation and it comes in a, a really strong presentation box uh, with a clear plastic front so you can see the the bottle displayed inside it has a, a matte black finish which uh, looks like it's going to be a soft touch suede uh, but it's actually not it's more of a just a hard cardboard uh, then there's some gold accents and branding uh, uh, on the front and round the back there's all your product information in metallic gold uh, including the size and concentration in which, which case is uh, an order path from then at the top corner there's uh, an authenticity hologram uh, and to access the bottle you lift it up from the bottom uh, and the fragrance is mounted into like a black velour surround which is usually a bit of a, a nightmare and a struggle to remove but I've managed to do it this time. The first thing you notice about the bottle is, is just how heavy it is and there's some serious heft to it. It feels really strong and well made and this does have a kind of a, a soft touch brush feel to it. You get some gold kind of art deco style detailing on the front and round the sides. Uh, then there's a gold uh, logo plate on top of the cap there. Uh, and then you also get this kind of gold engraved plate at the bottom uh, with all the product information on. And I can't help but wonder how the, the brand can make uh, a profit selling this at 25 quid with this level of presentation. It really does feel like you're handling something 10 times more expensive. The cap, the cap slides over the atomizer and doesn't click into place so never ever lift the bottle by the cap otherwise you're getting a broken toe. There's a gold atomizer with a, a decent spray quality and for the price this massively ex ex exceeds my expectations and I literally can't believe what you get for your money so 10 out of 10 for presentation even if it is a, an extreme knockoff of the original. The top notes in this one are saffron, nutmeg and lavender. In the heart we've got agar wood or oud uh, and the base notes are patchouli and musk. Yeah, so this opens up with really prominent notes of saffron and nutmeg uh, but I don't really get too much in the way of the lavender in the opening in this one. The oud is a, a fairly mild non-abrasive westernized oud and everything starts out fairly sweet with a hint of spice and like an oriental muskiness in the background. It's a warm and luxurious smelling scent that's very smooth and to my nose I get like a, a brushed suede type of aroma from it. The patchouli is not too prominent uh, which is not a bad thing for me because it's not a note that I'm the biggest fan of. And considering all the masculine resinous notes in the note breakdown, I'm, qu I'm quite shocked as to how easy going and pleasant and enjoyable this fragrance is. It's definitely more masculine than it is feminine and it's not something I'd really enjoy personally smelling on a woman. But I can see why lots of women enjoy this because there is a little bit of a, a Baccarat Rouge 540 thing going on in the dry down. And every now and again I pick up the, on the odd waft uh, in the air similar to the new Dior, uh, 
uh, Dior Sauvage Elixir. And I know this is nothing like that one, uh, but they do share like similar notes of like nutmeg, lavender and patchouli. And if you're familiar with the Sauvage Elixir, you'll definitely pick up on the mild characteristics of that one in this fragrance. Yeah, I'd say this is best suited to the autumn and winter months of the year uh, and I'd only ever personally wear this one in the evenings if I was going to like a dressed up occasion or for a night out. In my opinion it's too rich and expensive smelling to wear casually during the day and I think it's one that could get a little bit annoying for the people around you in like a small confined space or an office environment uh, but it's one that I could definitely imagine the company uh, CEO to be wearing. It's quite a grown up and mature smelling fragrance and like I said earlier, I definitely think that this sits firmly on the masculine side of unisex. It'd be a decent date night fragrance because it does have a mysterious and sexy quality to it uh, that will draw people in and it just gives off a very addictive and intoxicating aroma when it's in the air. The performance on this one is very good, uh, but maybe not as heavy eating as you might expect it to be. It's got a, a good projection that will 100% uh, get you noticed and complimented, uh, but it's just maybe not as potent as some of the other Middle Eastern oud fragrances that kind of fill a room with a massive scent cloud. This is a touch more refined with a like an arm's length projection, uh, but it will last uh, a good 10 to 12 hours uh, if you apply a, a spray or two on your clothes. So this one to me is pretty much a one-to-one -one clone of Oud for Greatness and it's one of the most hyped clones in the fragrance community. There are going to be trolls like I had yesterday that leave comments saying it smells nothing like the original uh, but I like to think that most of us have a few brain cells and just ignore comments like that. This is extremely accurate, but even if it didn't smell anything like the original, it's just a great smelling scent for 25 quid, so who really cares whether it's 50, 75 or 100% accurate? If five people uh, all wore the exact same fragrance, they'd all smell slightly different on each person anyway due to their own unique skin chemistry. So I think that sometimes we just get uh, too wrapped up in how accurate they are uh, rather than just how good they smell. I actually think that the Afnan fragrance that I reviewed yesterday uh, smells better than the original Creed Aventus that it's inspired by so I don't concern myself too much with the old accuracy stuff. Uh, there's no way that anyone smelling this in the air will know that it's not oud for greatness and most of the general public that you come into contact with on a daily basis won't have even smelled the original anyway. This is a very likeable and soft smelling oud based scent so don't be put off it if you think you don't like oud fragrances or the, the note of oud. It's uh, probably my favourite oud fragrance and for that reason it gets a solid 9 out of 10 from me. So once again that's about it for today's scent of the day. Uh, in the next episode I'm going to be letting you know my thoughts on three samples uh, that got sent to me from the Cologne factory which is another clone house based in the UK. I've also got a couple of perfume parlour hauls to talk about as well as another brand new 2022 release in the 365 project so some great stuff to look forward to. And as always if you found this video useful please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It's always great to hear your uh, opinions, your thoughts and your critiques on all of the fragrances that feature in this 365 project so keep your comments coming down in the comments section. So once again, thank you very much once again for tuning into this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you maybe tomorrow for another one. Bye-bye for now.